be our, our light unto, un, unto nations. But don't think that there were not missteps along the way. Because right after this, on page 56, there was a famine in the land, and what did Avram do? Vayerud Avram Mitzrayma. Avram went down to Egypt, Lagor Sham, to live there. Ki kaved harav ba'aris, because the famine was great in the land. Rashi interprets this as a test that Avraham passed. The test was in here. Not in action, but in here. Meaning, God told me to come here. I came, and now there's a famine. Why is God doing that? He didn't question. And he just accepted and went to where there was food. Ramban learns this was a failure of Avraham. God told you to go to Canaan. You stay in Canaan. There's a famine. You stay in Canaan until God tells you to go elsewhere. Okay, well, we have free will. We have, we have we free will. Care. We, got, our, we have to preserve your life. Okay, so, so we're not, granted, Ramban would agree that we're not talking about life threatening, right? Just a little but, bit. But um, a little, you know, a little, a little less available. You know, the avocados are costing three dollars each now, you know, instead of, uh, you know, two for a dollar. Okay, so, you know, it, right, clearly I would agree, right? So there are different interpretations. Ramban says this was a mistake that Avram made. And then when he got down there, and he realized, Sarai, you're beautiful. And he was afraid what would happen. So what does he do? He says, she is my sister. Now, Right? He was afraid if I would say she's my wife, what are they going to do? She kind no. of was his sister. Okay, so granted, right, a niece, right, is considered to be like a sister. It's one generation down. So it wasn't an outright lie. Had he said, this is my wife, they would say, oh, she's a married woman? Not anymore, right? And take care of Avram and take her. So instead, he said that she's my sister. The, the commentators explain, he said she's my married sister, mm-hmm. right? But they didn't care, and they took her, and then the whole thing with Paro until she's returned. But once again, Ramban says, Avram, you should not have taken that chance, you, right, and of, of putting your wife so all of this resulted from his going down there in the first place that he shouldn't have going to Ramban that led to this problem now with Sarah, which he dealt with the wrong way. So Avram is making um, some mistakes along the way, right? Then there is the war of the kings. Go to page 63. Avram saves Lot. Right, he go wins the battle. Page sixty-five, verse seventeen. The king of Sodom went out to meet him after his, uh, defeating Chadar Omer, and the kings are with him to the valley of Sheva, and he brought up bread and wine. Right, I'm sorry. Twenty-one. The king of Sodom said to Avram, "Give me the people and take the possessions for yourself." Avram said to the king of Sodom, "I lift my hand to Hashem, God Most High. I won't take a thing from you." I don't want you to say I made Avraham rich. Mm-hmm. Only what the young men have eaten, the share of the men accompany me, they will take their portion. But I won't take any property from you. What's the problem, though? He gave back the people. Give me the people. And these people were people who are now going to be under the influence of Sodom. Avraham had an opportunity to influence these people. We hear about Sodom and Amorah, right? That was one of the most vicious, corrupt societies. They're those say Avram made a mistake. He should have held on to the people and taught them what life was about. We have the covenant, right? And then we have Hagar and Yishmael, right? Page 71. 
Now Sarai, Avram's wife, had borne him no children. She had an Egyptian maidservant, name was Hagar. Hashem is restrained me very and consort with her. Right? I will be built up through her. Avram listened to Sarah. Right? And then she gave birth. Right? And then, right, his her mitchus was, was lowered, the end of verse 4, was lowered in her esteem. Hagar started treating Sarai with disrespect. Uh, obviously, she's not quite as righteous as she presents, right? She's been married all these years, no children, and I have children. So Sarai said, to Avram, the outrage against me is due to you, right? And she dealt harshly with her, verse 6, and so she fled from her. Ramban says that Sarai was too rough on Hagar. And we are suffering the consequences today of Sarai's rough treatment of Hagar that Hagar's descendants are going to cause anguish to Sarai's descendants. Who are Hagar's descendants? Yishmael, that's the Arab world, causing distress to Sarai's descendants. So right after we hear about Avram being chosen, and he's concerned about the name of his brother Haran, and he's concerned about the name of God, and that's all he cares about. Why does the Torah keep highlighting these errors that Avram is making along the way? Is the lesson to us? That? We all we will make mistakes all through our lives. Is the lesson to us that we want to be terrible? We're all gonna make mistakes. Yeah. That is the human nature that is that is part of being human. We all make mistakes and we make decisions. Some of them are good decisions, some of them are poor decisions. But, but, that does not take away from a person's potential and a person's greatness. He is Avram Avinu. He's human. All right, the Torah stresses this by the birth of Moshe. A man took a woman and they conceived a child and that was Moshe. Why? Let us know. He wasn't like Kim Il Nun or John, whatever, that a star descended and, and that's how the North Korean leader was born. Right? There was no immaculate conception. Right? We're all human. Our greatest leaders were human. Our greatest leaders make mistakes. We all make mistakes. But Avram left to go to the land of Canaan, and what did he do? Vayavo Artsa Canaan. They came to the land of Canaan. We all have our detours, we all have our stumbles, we all have our missteps, but as long as we keep our eye on the goal, and we keep moving forward, then as, as we are told, a person needs to say, Matai yagiu ma'asai, when will my actions reach the actions of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Valeya. The blessing we give our daughters on Shabbos is you should be like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. And our sons like Menashe and Ephraim. The great, the, the great grand, the, the children, grandchildren, great grandchildren of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. With our imperfections, with our stumbles, with our follies. But we keep our focus, and we don't allow them to, to cause us to become debilitated, demoralized, throw in the towel. And that's how our nation, that's how our nation was formed. So three things puzzle me. Um, it's always wonder, made me wonder um, why can Sarah say the outrage against me is to you? She did 